Welcome to the Ask Sabado channel, and I'm Sabado, your host, and I try to have conversations that are real about people that are thinking about retirement, people that are already retired, or just people that want to live their best life and want to get some good perspective. And so, uh, you know, the purpose of the channel isn't to try to tell everybody what to do, isn't trying to run people's lives, but it's about trying to help people understand that even if you're not able to retire in five or 10 years, you still have the opportunity to live your best life and move your life forward and, and feel good about whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're going into work every day, whether you're in the gig economy and so on. So um, I've been retired for about just under a year and I'm looking forward to getting to that year, but uh, yeah, I, I'm just living my best life. And as I've been through this journey, I try to share with you things that I've learned or perspectives that I have or things that helped me get here. And I, I try to do it in a pragmatic, honest, down to earth way, uh, in a way that makes sense. And so if that works for you, then let's get into it. So um, I had a conversation the other day with a really good friend of mine, actually my best friend, who uh, recently had some employment challenges, um, AKA he got laid off. And it's interesting to me that his approach to finding another job was, he's the same age as me. I'm 52. I think he's 51. Um, he's, he's had a bunch of jobs and we've come up together and we've all, we've grinded together for a period of, I don't know, 30, 40 years. And, um, we started to get to talking and he told me about some of the opportunities that were coming his way. And one of the things I shared with him is that, if you figure out what it is that you want to do with your life, then focus on doing that because, you know, I think a lot of us out there look at people like me, look at other early retirees, or just look at retirees in general, and we think we want to be like them, we want to be retired, we don't have to go into work, and we don't have to deal with the rigmarole that comes with the normal nine to five. But the reality of it is, is that you're always going to have something that you have to do and so if that's something you have to do now is going into work, instead of going in and trying to focus on making more money, instead of focusing on getting promoted, instead of focusing on getting that great annual evaluation, what if you try to um, find yourself an opportunity that met your own personal goals or that filled your cup as it will? And so as an example, my best friend, um, is an, is, he's an he's a, he's a, a, a internet uh, uh, marketing and media guy. And so the guy is in front of all of the technology, worked with some major brands like CNN, Cartoon Network. Um, he actually produced cartoons at one point. I mean, the guy's done a lot of stuff. And once he got laid off, he thought to himself, you know, I'm, I'm in this rat race and I'm, I'm running 100 miles an hour. And what am I really getting out of it? And I, I told him that perhaps something he needs to think about is, you know, get out of the rat race. You're not going to be able to retire today or tomorrow. You've, you've got a young child. You've got, you know, your wife isn't close to retirement, but find something that you like to do. So, for example, when I uh, took my last job, I had been a healthcare executive for a long time and I was constantly going in and solving problems for major healthcare organizations, negotiating deals for labor, uh, for major uh, uh, healthcare organizations. And really kind of in COVID, I was at ground zero. I was actually uh, an essential worker, uh, believe it or not, during COVID. And I thought to myself when I left that, because uh, when most people were out of work because of the mandates and um, the stay at home orders, uh, I was still going to work. I, I got burnt out and I and I just started to think, is this really doing it for me? And the fact that I was able to change lives, and again, many of you know that my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition uh, any, any way that I can. Uh, but even in spite of that, I was being, I was getting burnt out. I was in for long days. We were on the phone for countless hours with the Department of Public Health, the CDC, and so on. And so when I changed jobs, the idea that I had was that I was going to find a job 
that met my own personal goals. And so I left and I went to a small nonprofit, um, which was actually from a nonprofit perspective, a fairly large nonprofit. But I went into a role that I felt was going to fill my cup. And, and by doing that, it was going into a role that wasn't work, but that was something fun. Now, I will say that it turned into something a little bit different than that, uh, but that was the idea. And so as I was talking to my best friend about the roles that he was going to go into, one of the roles he talked to me about today was an opportunity he had to do the work that he was doing with the Boys and Girls Club of America. Uh, we talked to about, about the money that they were going to pay, and they were going to pay him significantly more than he was making at his last job, even though he had just had these employment challenges. And it was an opportunity for him to give back to the community that he serves. In fact, this is an individual that at one point did some uh, work with the uh, Big Brother program because, again, in, in different communities, different people have different opportunities and can benefit from different types of mentorship. And so as an African-American man, he thought it was important for him to go and work with the Boys and Girls Club um, as a big brother just to give somebody who didn't have a father figure in his life the opportunity to have a, male, a positive male role model in his life. Uh, so those are the types of things that drive him. And so as we talked about the opportunity that came forward in the Boys and Girls Club, it became a no-brainer because it created an opportunity for him to do something that was great. And so it got me thinking to myself, you know, we, we on this channel, we, we talk a lot about early retirement. We talk a lot about the tools of early retirement, how to get there, um, and you know, how easy, or I don't want to say easy, but the steps to getting to early retirement. But you know, the fact is, is that many of us, whether it's real or perceived, have a, a huge uh, number of barriers in front of us that are going to get us to early retirement. And I, I get it. I, I don't live in the cuckoo world and, and think that everybody's just going to leave their job tomorrow and retire early. But I, I do think we all have the opportunity to to carve a life out for ourselves that we feel good about. And I, I, I talk to some folks that are in their 70s that are still working. And when you talk to folks that are in their 70s and still working, the one thing that they say consistently is that the role that they're working in isn't just a job, but it's fulfilling another need that they have. And so this is an opportunity for my best friend to be in a job where he's really having fun and thinking about having fun as opposed to going into work and having to grind. Now, one of the things I think as, a, as, a, as an early retiree is you don't wanna be um, beholden to somebody else's schedule. You don't wanna help somebody else meet their goals at the, at the uh, uh, expense of, of your own uh, sense of well-being. But the other side of that coin is you have to ask yourself, what is it that you're going to get involved with when you do retire? And if when you do retire, you are going to work with kids, you are going to work with mentoring, you are going to work with making the world better, you are going to work with trying to provide opportunities to organizations that may not otherwise have the opportunities because of financial reasons and so on, but you have the skill set to be able to help them. If you're able to do that, then go out and do that. So I, I just want to be clear that I'm not dissuading anybody from going after their life and meeting their life passions. In fact, I'm hoping that every single one of you do go out and meet your life passions. The problem is most of you right now aren't doing jobs that meet your life passions. You're going into work, you're calling in sick, you're tracking your sick time to see how much time you have. So if you do call in sick, you're waiting for Friday you're enjoying the weekend, you hate Mondays, it's the whole It's the whole thing. And if that's not you, then you're already living your best life. And so all I could do is add you a little bit of perspective of what life is like on the other side. But for the rest of you, we're trying to get to that place where we could love our existence, where we could say we really enjoy what we're doing and that going in on Monday fills our cup. And even on Saturday or Sunday, it fills our cup to the degree that even if we go in on Saturday and we don't want to, our significant others or the other people in our life are saying, go in because you enjoy it, you need to do it, that's what you like to do. And so if, if that's not the case, then don't do it. But if that's the case, then continue to do it. 
I don't want to dissuade anybody from what it is that, 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 that fills their cup because at the end of the day, we have one life and that life is like a big cup that we want to have filled. But I thought it was important for me to share with you the conversation with my best friend because after being laid off, he now has the opportunity to go into a role that is something that even if he was in his current role, he may go in there and continue to do that type of role. Or he may have quit his job to go to that job because that job fills his cup. So remember, I think I mentioned in another video, um, I, had a, I had a boss that told me, you know, don't get so caught in the tricks of the trade that you forget the trade. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that that's the same thing I'm saying here. Don't get so caught into wanting to leave work that you lose sight of what it is that you really want to do, what fills your cup, what meets your personal mission statement. Because once you get to the other side, and I'm here to tell you, those things, you have an opportunity to do those things. And so all of those things that I wanted to do when I was working that I couldn't do, I'm doing now. But for some people, they have the opportunity to do them when they're working. So don't, don't get so caught up in, I want to stop working, stop working, stop working, so that way I can sit on the couch and watch Barney and Friends all day. Because, you know, that's not a life for anybody. And I, I'm just here to tell you. But if there's things that you want to do, think about and do an inventory. Can I do those things now? Can I not do those things now? If you can, then get after it and go do it. If you can't, then it's time to think about another way to do it. And is it retiring? If your circumstances are right, then I recommend that you do it. Period. End of story. But if you can't, because it's going to take some time financially, there's some there's some opportunities that you have to save some more money and you and you need you need more money, then you have to wait. But make sure that you're taking your life down the path of filling your cup because nobody in this world is going to fill your cup except for you. So uh, I wanted to give you a quick one today just to have that conversation because I, I, I one of the things that, that retirement has afforded is it's afforded me an opportunity to, to spend time and the capacity to spend time talking to people and really digging into what people are thinking about the lives that they lead. And there's a bunch of people that are living a great life that are doing exactly what they want to do. Then there's the rest of us that are going into work today, as I like to call the working class stiffs, that end up frustrated on Friday, tired on Monday, and hoping that we can get at least a Wednesday so we can get the hump day so we can have the illusion that the work week is going gonna, is gonna to start winding down, which on Wednesday it usually doesn't. So... That was all I had today. Um, as a, as a, again, I, I ask that, you know, let me know where you're from. Um, you know, we've had a lot of comments on the channel. Uh, I, I do, the, the comments are, are uh, incredible and they really provide a, a good sense of, of what you're thinking. And it really gives me an idea of some opportunities to create some, some content around. So, um, you know, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about where you are in your career journey and where it is that you want to go. Um, let me know how you feel about your job. I mean, it's some people love their job. Some people want to work forever. You know, I'm not going to be a hater. If you love it, if you like it, I love it. Go ahead and do it. But if you don't, then let's think about how you could do something different. I can, I, you know, we can, we can talk about that. So let me know. Someone was detected at your gate. So as, as people are walking around my gate... <laughs> Um, you know, just think about some of those things that, that you might want to do or, or some of those opportunities that sit out there for you. And, and we can talk about those on the channel. And also suggest that if you're interested, you know, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, we're fortunate to have a growing channel. Uh, I, my, my content is, is never edited. It's never, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not selling out to corporate sponsors. I'm just giving you the truth. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I was fortunate enough to retire at 51, um, and and I just I just share my perspectives, and and we could talk about those. We could talk about what's going on in your minds. We could talk about all the all the rest of those things. Um, so if you you know feel free to subscribe to the channel, and if you want to get uh, together and and communicate on a more personal level, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me on my Ask Sabado. Uh, channels or pages on Facebook or Instagram. You can slide into my DMs, they say, ask me a question. If it's a question you just want one-on-one, -on -one, then I, I can answer it that way too. So that's about all I had uh, for this evening. 
But again, just, you know, the reality is, is just let's, let's get into filling our cup. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to talk about retirement. It's easy to fantasize about what the world could be, but sometimes we're just not there. And I, I don't want anybody to lose hope. And I, I want you to really th just think about uh, where, where, you know, the, the, the possibilities that, that sit out there for you. And so, uh, you know, let me know where you're from. Let me know what additional questions you have and we'll continue the conversation because, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to stop uh, on this either because I, I'm really passionate about um, just helping you uh, achieve your goals and get to where you want to be in, in a pragmatic, non-overwhelming um, type of way. So again, this is your main man, Sabado. It's great talking to you. Uh, have a good night and we will talk soon.